So I'd like to welcome Darren Smith, drummer, extraordinaire, singer. What more can I say? Guitarist. Yeah. Handsome son of a bitch. <laughs> absolutely. What can't this guy do? Darren, welcome to um, Product of the Working Class, fella. Thank you for giving up some time over in Ontario. And uh, yeah, man, how's it going? This is Canada on TV. <laughs> Yeah, um, it's uh, things are good, you know. I, I got no complaints. Excellent. Other I'm than I'm not on tour. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so um, obviously you've been, um, you've been a bit busy doing a few things, kind of low key and everything like that, because obviously yeah, you... you know, just just having fun with the like I have, like I say, I have this jam tower, uh, box back here. It's just you just walk in, you don't have to bring anything, you just play. And uh, I spend some time in there working on material and writing songs and stuff. I have a 24 track recording uh, O2R in there uh, with Elisa's hard drive, 24 track and, um, you know, full of amps and guitars and drums and bass amps. And yeah. Sounds good. Sounds really good. So what we'd like to do tonight, mate, if that's okay. Well, it's tonight in the UK, but afternoon over where you are. Um, yeah, I just missed lunch. <laughs> i've just had my i just had some fish and chips actually nice. yeah it's very nice very nice um be really good to talk about how you how you got into into drums how you got into rock because there's nothing quite like it right. um and how that journey's been for you really uh in in the career that you've that you've had you know since since the, when it started back in the 40 80s. years i've been doing this a little bit more than 40 years but I don't care that much. 40 sounds good. Um, Does sound good. Yeah, I, I've, uh, I've, I've been playing my whole life. I've, uh, you know, I've had the odd regular job, but that blows. So um, I, I just somehow manage to stay with this game. Um, this is, this is a bit of a twist, the whole COVID factor. Um, I'm not really sure. I mean, uh, this is, is, this is an industry with no major labels involved, you know, at all. And, uh, but, you know, music has to, it has to evolve and it has to change to suit, you know, how the world's changing. And um, this is actually the first time I've ever had a vacation from touring. <laughs> wow. So, in, yeah, in, the, so. so in, the, in the entire time that you've been actively in the music industry, this is the first proper, proper break, as it were. Yeah, yeah. Like, like I get up, I eat. I get bored. I watch TV and I, you know, I write songs and uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's probably the only time in my life I've ever had. It. So I'm being an optimist. I, 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 um, I always look up at the brighter side of uh, whatever's happening in this world. This is, I never thought, you know, I, I never expected to live through a war <laughs> and, and, but COVID is, is basically the most boring war of all time. <laughs> and uh but, you know, here it's um, nothing's really changed on the compound. There's uh, 50 acres here and um, people come here and they jam and we wear a mask till we're inside. And then, you know, you bother the neighbors. Sounds <laughs> good. So, sounds good. Sounds yeah. good. So what was it like? Um, and how did you, how did you get into music in the first place? So when you were back at high school and all those sorts of things, what was what was the draw? that went oh man i really want to really, really recall wanted... i don't really recall but i just remembered spending a lot of time in my bedroom at my mom and dad's house listening to records and buying records and you know and uh going to you know record swaps and stuff and i have a, an incredible plethora of vinyl and uh when i divorce it's the first thing i take <laughs> <laughs> it's the most valuable thing it is. It is. Vinyl's the only, the only thing I really need in this world. I got another girlfriend now, but anyway, it's another story. <laughs> That's but, another uh, story for another time. Over, yeah, over uh, a few beers, well, absolutely. I, I think after that, you know, um, music interested me, but so did girls, and uh, and I, you know, it all goes hand in hand. It wouldn't be one without the other, right? This is absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I couldn't agree. I couldn't agree more. So what were I your everything, you know? Yeah. It, it all interests me. And I think to be a well-rounded musician, you have to know how hard your players are, are, are how good they are, you know, but mm. 
you know, if you surround yourself with brilliant players, that'll only take you up. And that's sort of what I've been doing my whole life. Oh, and so I, you know, I'm playing with Jakey e. Lee now. I know. And, I know. Wa- and wow. I What's mean, next? <laughs> we're talking like rock royalty when we talk about, when Absolutely. We talk about Jake. It's just insane. One of the finest human beings I've ever met too. I love the guy. Oh, it's just incredible. I mean, obviously, um, it was sad when Randy passed away. Um, but what yeah. Jake, but what Jake brought for Ozzy after that was just something else. And I, you know, um, that's some big shoes to jump into. But yeah, look at what he brought to the table, you know. And I think that's amazing. And while we're talking about him, uh, I le- genuinely love the whole Red Dragon project. I think it's incredible. All the- I love it. It's great stuff, man. So. Um, First band I ever auditioned for. I mean, I might have auditioned for Harem Scarum, but <laughs> Harry, me and Harry played together when we were little kids in a band called Blind Vengeance. I knew him when he was probably 13, 14 years old. Awesome. And uh, we used to ride dirt bikes together and stuff. But um, yeah, he, you know, he, everybody in Harem Scarum, we're all such different people, but we I've been in the band since 88. And, and I left to pursue like careers where I'm the, you know, the, the front guy and stuff. And, um, there's maybe, well, I've sang, there's, I think there's one record I never sang on, but, um, yeah, I mean, uh, I don't know what another life would be like, but I'm not complaining about this one. Oh, that's fair. That's fair enough. What was it like stepping out from behind the kit and you know, stepping out and taking over that main vocal. Cause I'm an attention I... horror, man. It's nothing. <laughs> 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 oh man. I, I, you know, I sing, I play a, a pile of instruments all oh. just half ass, just enough to get the girl. And after that you go on tour and no one gives a shit. You know, it's, <laughs> as simple as that. And, and if you play from the heart, people get it. That's all. Yeah. And I, and I think you're right there. One of the things that's, um, this, there's been this thread that's come through all of the interviews I've done uh, since I started doing this, um, and everyone there's, there's a real community when it comes to rock music, um, heavy metal, whatever you want to call it, whether you call it hair metal, whether you call it glam, whether you call yeah. it hard rock, whatever, it doesn't matter whether you're playing. You know, you could be in Slayer, and then you could be in um, a Thin Lizzy tribute band. But I've done that. <laughs> You know where I'm coming from. This this whole thing. This this mutual respect for the, for what it what it stands for. And I and I'm a, I'm, I'm a lover of that. You know. I mean, I've been into this sort of stuff since I first heard Hysteria and Appetite for Destruction. And I can't right. get enough. Of, I can't get enough of it. You know. Yeah. Um, okay. And I obviously I was devastated when Nirvana came along and killed a lot of the music I was in. in the necessary re- evil. You know. But it had to happen. It has well, to happen, yeah, you know. But what I mean, it happened with the music's music. It, it has to have different changes as it goes by because people will get sick to death of it if it doesn't. And uh, if it wasn't for places like, you know, the UK and Japan, uh, melodic rock probably would have just been dumped, you know. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, we're inside now. So this is this the jam? Is this the jam room? Yeah, this is. We're inside here. This is where the Wi-Fi comes from. And then we got this. This a uh, uh, fan drew this picture up here. You see that? Of uh, yeah, Red man. Dragon? That's that's really cool. I don't know what I'm doing with this thing, but yeah, love it. That's awesome. And you know, I I've, I've kept things like you know flags that uh, fans in Japan have made for us and. And uh, this is a friend of mine who passed away. This is who I have on my hand. That's Jeanette Hutchinson. She uh, she died during COVID. And yeah, I mean, 59 lead EP. Nice. Yeah, with the original aluminum snare. That's nice. which is right there. Look at that. Nice. You know, video cameras were easier than this. <laughs> yeah, you could... Uh... <laughs> Uh, the eight mil, you could hold them up to your eye all the time. Right. <laughs> yeah, so this is uh, the, the D drum with a Tama kick drum. And we smash it here. That's about it. 
That's what you want to do. That's what you want to do. So, so I'm going to ask you, um, Daz, what? Who are your Who are your main influences, fella? Have you got? Have you? If you've got any, you know, what are your? Um, um my main influences. He's well, going to I'm, I'm, I'm mention me on, now. I'm on Steve Gadd, you know, as a drummer. Yeah, and cool. Pete um, Newdeck. Obviously, Pete Newdeck. <laughs> and I, I'm just. Uh, and Pete I, Newdeck. I really, I, I've been doing it so long. I don't think I, 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 it's hard for me to think about what influences me. I, I stay away from the radio. <laughs> That's because it's enough. all crap. <laughs> I've got a face for radio. <laughs> <laughs> well i'm much better looking on the radio that's for sure this is, this is going to ruin my career though <laughs> no it's or not going to it's not going to it's definitely not going to ruin your career it's not going to do that no it's not um no definitely not so what what was it like being part of um harem scare and back so back in that last gasp of that 80s kind of hard rock thing that was going on what was that what was that like to have a piece of that because obviously i was a uh i was young and dumb at that point you know and lo just loving everything so what was yeah, how, how was great. that um uh, well it, it was odd see uh when grunge changed music over here in canada everybody everybody lost their record deals like nobody wanted to invest in you know the, the melodic rock band because mm -hmm. are from this from this part of the world but um we went to Japan and we were like overwhelmed with that and, and then you know because the UK still loved their melodic rock um and I get to go home to, to play there I mean it, we we were very lucky you know for that to happen if we'd never gone to Japan I honestly couldn't tell you what would have happened or if we could get enough work just in the UK I don't know I don't think we'd be together all these years later. Mm. I was just told our debut record turned 30 years old. Uh, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, yeah, that's how bloody old we are. <laughs> but it's but it's still really cool, though. I, I love the fact that those sort of records are that old, but they're still so important, you know. Um, yeah, and 17 I think... records. That's that's pretty, pretty good, you know, and... Uh, it's i've been in this business so long i don't remember how it started or why it started or what's going to happen that's the other part too right yeah but yeah. you know you get to a certain age i have no complaints about how my career went um uh my real talent is i pick up the best people along the way like everywhere i go I get to visit my family all over this world, and and that's worth more than any money you could ever put on it. But, um, you know, I'm gonna keep doing it till I can. Yeah. Man, the that's... last time, the last time I hooked up with Daz, I took him out for breakfast <laughs> to Weatherspoons. <laughs> oh wow, that's a UK tradition. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> and and it was just full of wrong people, wasn't it? Do you remember? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. We were sat in the middle. We were <laughs> sat in the middle of all these wrong people. Hey, check this out. Over, oh, I just got gout at fifty-five. Wow. Yeah, I'm, so I can't drink beer anymore. You wouldn't believe how much whiskey I put down this skull. <laughs> oh, I would. I would believe it because I've been with you when you've done yeah. it. Yeah, we oh, we played fun. we played Heat Festival in Germany. And uh, there was a, a large bottle of Jack Daniels uh, backstage for the bands. And Daz probably <laughs> drunk the last half of the bottle hey, to man, himself. It was over. <laughs> to himself. And it was over, hide the booze. <laughs> it was a comedy show getting him back to the hotel. Yeah, I don't remember that one. I don't remember it. <laughs> What's that all about? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I'm spoiling your interview here, Cal. Carry on. Oh, it's fine. Oh, mate. My no, it's, it's coming over. Buddy, it's, it's great. It's coming over to get uh, food. I mean, get uh, wood. 
<laughs> I love having. I think it's great having all the ba- all the banter and everything between the two of you, and that's 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 great because it, it just shows that uh, you know the deep love and the and the camaraderie between the two of you, which I think is well, is you know, when fab. You, have, you know, when you, have, when you have friends with something in common, mm. I, I mean, you don't have to you don't have to look for things to do. <laughs> You know? Yeah, yeah, and and it, when and that's, that's right because when you you chat about all that sort of stuff and it's just and it's great and the time passes and it goes really quick, you know, and I and I think that's yeah, it's, it's a good, it's a really good, uh, it's a really good thing. It's a really really good thing, definitely yeah. without a doubt, without a doubt. So a um, point, go on, man, carry on. I have no complaints. I uh, I just uh, I'd like to get back to work. You know, I you know I'm, I'm playing a few shows around here, but it's we spent two years making that patina record and uh, I don't know if we're going to go back and continue with that or make a whole new record. I don't know. Mm. Yeah. Well, this is a thing, isn't it? Cause so obviously Pete's band, or one of his bands, midnight city, they've just had their new album has been out. Was it about that three months, Pete, something like that. It's not even that yet. Yeah, came out uh, June the 12th. I think it came out. So just over two months ago, and we've sold 14 copies. <laughs> I've got all 14. Yeah, you can give them 15 to me. <laughs> <laughs> Problem is, I don't want that one. I want the copies of the first two. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's been uh, it's been difficult for our label as, as well because uh, you know uh, a lot of people aren't investing in music and they're not investing in bands at the moment you know whether it's live or on cd or or recording people just aren't investing anymore because they they've hit hard times as much as uh the bands have hit hard times you know financially all these people are they're in the same position you know there's less work for them and this is globally so it's all difficult it's and it's a changed world whether this part of the world the music industry is going to recover fully we we actually don't know or whether this has changed the face of the music industry almost for good if i was in my 30s in this industry i'd be really unhappy (laughs) yeah but thank thank god i'm old as hell right (laughs) but you're not in the killers so it's all right You got all digi- digitized there for a second. Oh, did I? I started talking Transformer. I said it's because you're not playing in the Killers. That's why. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> hey, don't laugh. <laughs> I might be. <laughs> not, not that I'm gonna, not that I'm gonna diss Brandon Flowers and what they're doing. <laughs> although, although it was funny because there's thing popped up on Facebook um, last week. They released a new album last week. Came out on Friday, and this thing popped up. And they were uh, and this on the, these fans were talking about this new album, waiting for it, and I just put on there, "Don't bother," because it's just not worth listening to. Really? Yeah, I was really wow. dis- really disappointed. Wow! It just didn't okay. have any. You know, it's, it's, it's a shame because you know they've done some good stuff, you know, um, but it just didn't. It just no, none of that energy that you expect, you know. Um, so yeah, it's, it's sad times. Sad times. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. But it is um, what it is, well, you know. We can't seem to do any wrong with Harem Scarum popping what? records out every year. So Well, the last yeah. re- the, your the last album with Aftershock and stuff on it. Man, that's a kick ass album. I love it. Oh, I love yeah. it. Absolutely. Well, I love mean, it. In reality, there's no such thing as bad music, just you know, focused and narrow minded listeners, right? So I mean yeah. if, if that were true, then punk wouldn't have had a hope in hell. Bob Dylan wouldn't have a record deal. You know, it's just different, right? That's Lord a fair point. Neil that's Young. A f- <laughs> Neil Young. It's a fair point, though, isn't it? Because it's without without the audience that want to hear or choose to tune in and listen to it, um, there wouldn't be. Uh, it's interesting because when I spoke to Darby um, a few weeks ago and he was saying we were talking because obviously he's just done the headline set with Devin townsend um last friday at bloodstock and we oh, were just yeah, yeah. and we yeah man and we were talking about some, some of the stuff he was doing and uh, we were talking about some of those death metal drummers you know and he said you know it's it's not something he would enjoy doing but there's an audience that want it and yeah. i think you're right i think you're absolutely right um darren you know this is it depends on what floats your boat if you know what i mean 
Yeah, I mean, if, if you could imagine the world having a population of 30 people, do you imagine what the music would be like, right? Well, I know what it would be like if it was a population of 30 around me, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, 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 would be, it would be hysteria, appetite for destruction, and Dr. Feelgood. Uh, right, right. Yeah, you know? <laughs> so, so, but the, the beauty is you get to travel the world and find those pockets that are into you, you know? Yeah. Um, it's yeah. very rare that Scaring would ever do a show where the room isn't full, mm. you know? And uh, that's great and all, but I'll tell you what, I don't care if there's nobody at the club, I'm playing. I play for me first, my band second, the audience, well, good to have you, but we're going to rock with you or without you, you know? It's just what we do. Yeah. That's it. That's cool you saying that because uh, so uh, Shutty, who was one of the guys I did an interview with first, who played in a band over here called Terrorvision, and they were really big back in the nineties. And uh, yeah. he said exactly the same thing. And we were talking about you know playing small gigs and things, and he was saying like the, the smallest gig they did was in front of two people, but they didn't care because it wasn't yeah. about what the people were looking at; it was about what they were doing, and that was what was more important. Yeah, performing and, and pleasing yourself in the band that you're in is way more important than posing, right? Yeah. No. I, th I think oh, so. I, I don't know. <laughs> Are you into posing, Pete? Oh. <laughs> 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 oh. Right, guys, listen, I've got to sign off, but... Uh, all mate, right, love you, brother. Uh, Pete, good to speak I'll, to you, buddy. I'll see, I'll yeah. see you soon, Pete, all right? I'll speak to both of you very soon. Awesome. All right, brother. I'll see you Come soon. I'll get over there. Love you. Love you too, man. Peace. See ya. Bye-bye. Take care, bud. Bye. Bye. Oh, All thank right. God we got rid of that guy. Yeah, I know. And uh, So, who invited him to the party anyway? Uh <laughs> He's everywhere. Yeah, oh, man, he's a busy man. He's a busy, busy yeah. man. Yeah. He's, a, he's a busy man. So, what, yeah. so when, let's just kind of, dial back to um red dragon how did that kind of happen did did jake get in touch with you or did you see a did you see something because you were just how did that kind it's of kind of a weird story um a, a few years back uh slash was putting these songs out for velvet revolver and he was ha having people sing and write what he just sang you tracks and um uh, the producer of the studio we did the first Red Dragon album was, he's like, I know this song. And he was the producer for those songs in Vegas. Mm -hmm. And um, and I also sent a song that I wrote with a bunch of guys, Maladin from Von Groove and um, Stan uh, from, from uh, Harem Mascarum. Uh, in a band called Bastard. And uh, I sent a couple songs and I walked into a local music shop and the manager of the club of the, of the store said to me, you know, Jakey's looking for a singer. And I'm like, what's he want with a Canadian guy? <laughs> and um, all of a sudden I got a call and um, Jake had people going through these demos of people auditioning and uh, I got a call and I'm, I'm flying in over Vegas going, I'm auditioning. <laughs> like, what's going on? This is yeah, weird. Yeah. So I get in there and it's a party. Like Ron Keel was there. There was like, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Vinny, uh, Vinny Paul. Yeah. Um, and, and there's just like, there's waiters walking around handing drinks. I'm like, I guess this is how they do it in Vegas. <laughs> and, uh, and I was worried about, you know, like we didn't, I didn't know a lot of the songs or anything like that. So they gave me a bunch of light, a high wire from uh, Badlands. And I was like, I hope they don't want to do that song first. Cause I got to warm up. And that was <laughs> the first song and everybody's drinking and having a party. And then, uh, everybody takes a break and I'm just walking around and, uh, and I just go, Hey Jay, do I got the gig or what? <laughs> And he looks at me and he goes, you always had the gig. Oh, amazing. <laughs> that was it. And then, uh, you know, 
the drama and all that that happens within bands. Once we got that out of the way, we uh, made some good records. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. I love it. I just think it's awesome. It's got a really, um, a really good feel to it. I think it's a really nice balance. Um, it, um, well, yeah, Phil very- Harrell is a, a monster of a drummer, like monster. And he is the only drummer that plays exactly what he did on the record every night, like doesn't improvise. And I'm just wow. going, well, that is some discipline. <laughs> yeah, man, it is because it's really hard sometimes to not drift a little bit or add something in or try something else that you think, oh, that might fit. I, I know that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, and he he le- taught me, you know, discipline. I love just absolutely and what's been i know you know you're not bothered about your audience as you like well i don't mean like that um you know because the gig is about you having a good time in the band but that's not that's not the word i would use regardless if the audience is there or not i'm going all out like i'm not holding anything back that's all i'm saying yeah i that's that's where i was coming from but what's the biggest show that you've done if you don't mind me asking probably donington nice yeah yeah and you know there's there's been a few shows in my life that i go oh okay there's a place out here called ontario place right on the water and they have this rotating huge uh 360 venue where the 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 stage just turns i always wanted to play there and we got to open up for foreigner when i was with Aaron. that was cool Um, yeah man that sounds amazing Yeah, that's... Japan the first time was mm. kick ass. Yeah. yeah, Japan's got. I, I, I enjoyed it, you know. Yeah, it was a big, fo- big following. And then, what was it like when you? Because ca- obviously, you had a bit of a homecoming when you did the um, the Firefest up in uh, up in Nottingham a few years ago, didn't you? Uh, when you did the headline, what was that like? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was that was that good? It, crack? it was great fun, great fun because there's all these bands, so you get the play and then you get to go party with everybody so that was fun because <laughs> there's this there's a massive push over here there's this um organization called hrh um and they do uh, like like loads of different themed kind of um weekends so you got hrh aor which i know pete's band are playing at or hrh um sleaze or hrh you know they're doing lots of these kind of very bespoke kind of things but it's becoming a really big deal over here in the uk you know yeah, oh, yeah it's really oh, cool where they're getting so it's same sort of idea as as firefest so they're bringing all these bands of the same kind of type together and then you get like three three nights of just absolutely banging tunes you know it's oh, amazing nice. it's really cool it's really really I, I, cool I, I know it'll come back i just don't know when so yeah everybody's in the dark i everybody's afraid to make the call to find out what's going on with the band because nobody wants to hear the bad news. Mm. But like I said before, man, like this is the, my first real vacation from life and I'm not complaining. I'm just making the most of it. You know, like there is no choice. So yeah. I'm carrying it on, man. No, that's cool. Cause Darby was saying that to me as well. So he said it's actually it's been really good for him because he ended up going to so he's, he, he's recorded a solo album in over through lockdown if you like because that's what we're calling it over here right right and um and, but he's he's got a chance to go he, he's just done and been and done the new key marcello album um out of this world that just what? yeah man phenomenal um and it's just really cool how everyone's going yeah man i'll come and help you out i'll drop in and add some stuff you know and i love oh, it yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've been. Uh, I've met some people over here that I play this place called the Atria, and uh, I run into all these new and young uh, musicians and artists, and uh, I help them out. You know, I'm playing drums on this guy's record named Jeff, and uh, I, I call him Jeff Atria. I don't even know his last name, but <laughs> you know, I like to play, so I'm gonna go. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and it's that. It's that. Um, and it's great when you get that buzz with people as well, isn't it? You know, that kind of organic, natural thing as it flows, because it just feels good. Yeah, it's it's weird even talking about it, because it's like, I don't think about it. It's just, mm. I wake up and this is what I do. But I, 
I don't think about it. Now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like, I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> I think it's a little bit like I'm, if you're a musician for as long as I have been, you're a little bit nuts, I think. It's it's a really unstable industry. <laughs> yeah, wow, well, yeah, yeah. And I, and I think even more so than it's ever been, like we've been talking about tonight, you know, it's... it's um, I, so I heard today, so Foo Fighters announced three big shows in the UK next year. Um, and they're playing, yeah, they're doing one at the the Olympic Stadium, which was built for the 2012 Olympic Games. Mm-hmm. And it's like 80,000 capacity or something like that. And, but they won 175 pounds, British pounds, for one ticket. It's just, how many people can't it's probably, the promo- it's probably the promoter going, I don't know if this is going to go, but if we sell... 50,000 tickets at that. I mean, it's it's all unstable. Like, if, if you're a promoter, you're not going to drop a substantial amount of money hoping. No. You know, unless you play Bitcoin and you're like a gazillionaire, you know, that's the only reason why that would be a good idea. But, I mean, it doesn't mean music has to stop. I think it's just going to go back to, like, the mind way, smaller tribes, smaller venues, let you don't make as much money but you know hopefully you did one day <laughs> years yeah. ago yeah and i and i and i think that's it and it's it's building up that um those really good venues again which have a really good name for themselves you know if we're talking about like like uh, CBGBs in um New York you know if yeah. those sort of venues or um the marquee that used to be in London you know those kind of really yeah. established venues where bands really want to go really want to go and play you know right um i think there's there's going to become more of those venues again you know nothing wrong with that but no i agree you know, when you're playing for a band to survive like the the price of of touring you know like tour buses aren't cheap you know and and you have to come back with some bank so the ticket price might go up I, I honestly, I don't have any answers. And I'm just sitting here waiting like everybody else mm. for someone who in charge to tell us what we're supposed to do. Yeah. But like I said before, you know, I've had a blessed career so far. I, I, I don't, I don't mind. <laughs> I mean, I just, I'd like to make that huge bank in case I need a new hit or something. Right? <laughs> 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 I tell you what, I would, I would love, I'd love to see uh, Red Dragon over in the UK. Um, maybe a download festival would be pretty cool. We That'd played, we played, we played that years ago. Did you? Okay, yeah, I didn't know. Yeah. I'm, I'm go, I'm going. Is, isn't that Donington? Yeah, it is. It's what they call yeah, it. Yeah, we, play, we played that with uh, Aerosmith. Nice. And, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Steel Panther and yeah. Richie Zambora. Um, Buck Cherry, it was awesome. And I, I was there with a girl I was seeing at the time and I was like, we got to go back to Don- Nottingham tonight. Do you want to stay to see Errol Smith? But it was a long day. Yeah. Uh, or you want to go back? I left and I'm, I'm driving. I'm gone. This is the stupidest decision I've ever made. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but. <laughs> no, it's, it's 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 so cool though because they, I mean, we obviously they have they're promoting it for next year. I've got a ticket to go next year, which is great. Um, because Kiss are headlining; they're one of my favorite bands, um, as well as Iron Maiden. Right. So I can't can't wait to see that. That's going to be great. So I'm looking forward to that whole thing because it's the last time I went to Donington was when it was still Monster Run Metallica headlined. Uh, in 95 it was just before load came out it was right on the cusp of they were right at the end of that black album tour and it was just incredible uh, just in- it amazing. used to be called monsters of rock right yeah it did that's exactly yeah. right yeah monsters of rock yeah yeah it's cool because i was talking so bob um richards who's a guy who i who's played with bands like shy he's done stuff with graham bonnet um and he's done stuff with, he recorded a couple of videos for ACDC, which is really amazing. But he, um, he was saying to me, he went to the first Monsters of Rock in like 1980 or 81 or whenever it was. Um, and Rainbow pl- were playing 
And he said that was the game changer for him. That was when he realised he wanted to be like Cozy Powell. He wanted that's what he wanted to do. Who was singing? Um, it was Gra- Graham Bonnet was singing. Oh, it was Graham. Yeah. Oh, I love the Alcatraz albums. Yeah, they're good, aren't they? God bless video. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, awesome. Just amazing. Got him on vinyl, man. Yeah, but this is it, and this is what this is what he this is what Bob was saying, you know. And he's um he got this bootleg, um, of Rainbow playing, and he listened to um the sound of Cozy's kit because he's actually you know the Chrome Stargazer kit that Cozy used to tour with the big Yamaha. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Well, Bob actually owns that kit now, um, so he's tuned it just like it sounded like on this bootleg. And it just is out of this world. It's just something else. Just, the, just uh-huh. brilliant. So cool. Um, Mark you know, Ramon got... has has my old TRS kit. Nice. <laughs> Love it. I don't even know what that means, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> so have you had, um this is one of the I uh, wanted to I uh, wanted to ask you as well. So I, I know obviously you've met a lot of people. Has there been anyone kind of in the music business that you've wanted to come across just to go hey man i appreciate what you jack what you... black <laughs> yes <laughs> awesome That's about it. i met um, everybody else i met ace fraley i've met i met a lot of people in this industry um but jack black i just i was uh jeff scott soto yeah. was uh, trying to get me on a bowling team Team to raise money in, in LA and um, he was trying to get me on the bowling team <laughs> just so I could go over and hang out with Jack Black <laughs> amazing amazing yeah. Jack Black's a dude though I love it yeah awesome hey, he's so he's so cool he's so cool yeah um, he is so cool um, there's such something it's just something really likeable about him isn't there yeah, he's just he's just him you know and then I, if you have to be someone else to make a career, that just sounds like a full-time job, and I don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> well, fair enough. No, that's fair enough. That's fair enough. No, that's 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 fair enough. No, that's all. It's all. It's all cool. No, it's it's all really good. Yeah, it's all really good. Because it's it's funny because I went. So Shutty had said to me that they went. They toured with Motorhead, and um, and they got nice. to sit behind Mickey D's kit, and he was just saying. You know, he'd never seen so many drums. He didn't know where to start, you know. Uh, it's just... <laughs> I, just... Uh, I saw him play for Scorpions oh, in wow. um, in Japan. In a, wow. a, like a huge, a huge venue where the entire stage was a TV screen. Wow. So they had the most... It, like you, it was hard to watch. There was so much going on. Your eyes were bugging out of your head. But I went there with a... Um, a friend of mine, Kiko, and we just sat there and watched this band freak us out. It was awesome. I'm yeah. still a huge music fan. I, I, I still enjoy it, you know. Yeah, man, that's cool. So, are there any any new new bands that you're um, that you'd recommend others have a listen to that you think they're definitely worth listening? Well, it, it's it's from my opinion. I if everybody had the same opinion, it'd be easy. Um, I love a, this band called Foxy Shazam. You ever I've heard, heard of Foxy Shazam? I, I've, I've heard of them. Yes, I have. They're, they're one of the, like a band like Jellyfish. You know that band? Yes, I do. Well, those are the ki- types of bands I like. And there hasn't been many other new ones, but I, I'm not outsourcing, looking for new material. I, I, um, I've just been, you know, COVID like everybody else. So there hasn't been much new stuff being made. And I, like I say, I don't listen to radio. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody, you know, you could like those 30 songs, all, every one of them. And then after you listen to radio for a week, you hate them. There's really no point. (laughs) There's no point in the radio anymore. Yeah. How do do you feel about the whole, um, like, digital music? So like Spotify and things like that. How, How do you... What's your opinion on that? Because um, just interested to oh, see just, what you it's think. Another, it's just another, you know, creep putting his hands in the pockets of musicians. Mm. Um, I don't use it. 
I got vinyl. I don't, I don't have any, any need to use any of that. Yeah. It's, what I, what I find, and I was, I had an interesting chat with Pete about this. It's because it's made it music a bit more throw away and not have the value on it. Cause when you buy, when you buy an album, when you buy a record, you invest in it cause you're giving up your money that you've earned for it. You know, right, right, right. whereas, if it's a digital thing, there's because it's no physical part to it, it ha- doesn't have any value, if you like. Do you know? Do you know what I mean? No, you need an album cover. <laughs> yeah. Well, interesting. I don't know. If yeah, you, yeah, I, absolutely. I, I, um, I don't know if you can. I, you probably can't see it, but over on my back wall, I've got the first first Kiss album up on my wall because that's I love the artwork, and I've got um, and Kicks blow my fuse. Just up behind me. I don't. You probably can't see him very well. I was in a, in a Kiss tribute out here. I was in a Kiss tribute out here called Black Diamond, and and uh, we worked for uh, Paul and Gene going yeah. across you know, with the makeup and all that. Oh, cool. I did that for a couple of years, but how was it fun? It was, but like everything, it it runs its course, and you're like, all right, I've done this, move on to like a career move, right? I toured yeah. across Canada like two or three times, and nose to nose in Canada. If you've never toured anywhere else, Canada is hard to tour. <laughs> okay. Was that good? Yeah. But it, like, it, like I, I played drums for an ACDC tribute once and, and you love it. You love it. And then once you've figured it all out, the, the luster is, is it, it gets a little patina, right? Yeah. 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 And, yeah. Uh, and uh, it, it, it sort of takes away from that mystical, rock and roll band and um i still did it i still had fun doing it playing with a double stack and a flying v and just it was fun it was fun yeah and i can do a decent paul stanley awesome. i could talk like i'm good at it <laughs> well that no that's that's good though that's was it but was it fun like playing detroit rock city and stuff like that was that good you know oh yeah oh hell yeah hell yeah but it was this was a long time ago like yeah probably 25 years ago or something but I saw, yeah. I saw the first time I saw Kiss was on the Revenge tour in '92, when they when they came to the UK. Really? Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, and they had um a New York band called Danger Danger it, touring with them. I I know those guys pretty well. Yeah. Oh man, and I was I and I loved Danger Danger. Still still love them now. I think they're That's a, a good epic, friend. They're epic, man. I love it. Um, and I got I got to meet um got to meet Ted and Bruno, which is really cool. But I remember when um, yeah. when when Kiss came on. They, it was when they had the Sphinx from the, they still they were still touring with the Sphinx that they had on the Hot in the Shade tour. And I'll never forget. Right. It, it just, I only have to shut my eyes. I can remember it now. But Eric Singer's kit coming up between the feet of the Sphinx, you know, and they open with Detroit Rock City, and uh, <laughs> just hear it just. Here, wait, yeah. and then and the and the other three came down, and it was when Bruce Kulick was still playing for them as well, and they came down. I think it's crashing back. again, oh, buddy. Oh, sorry, man. Is it is it bad? Over here. Oh man, hey, mate, I'm so sorry about this. It's not good, is it? No worries, man. Technology, it's a wonderful thing if it could only work. It does. It does sometimes. Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave this door open and see. If that helps. Yeah, hopefully that'll help. Yeah, and, and they and they just came literally. So you had Bruce, Paul, and and uh, and Gene just coming down on these platforms, you know, in just amazing. Blew me away. Just blew me away. It's amazing. Oh, nice, nice. Oh, nice, cool. Right, mate. I tell you what. I I think I've taken up quite a lot of your time today, um, and your afternoon and everything. Um, it's been amazing talking to you, buddy. Really has. I've loved it. Call me anytime, bro. Thank you. I really appreciate it, and um, I'm hoping that uh, perhaps when you uh, when you are able to get over to the UK, I'd maybe get a chance to hook up with you. I'd love that. Absolutely. I'll send you my phone number, and uh, when I'm heading over there, I'll, if mate, that, that would be. Near me, I'll put you on all all the shows, whatever you like. That would be incredible. I'd love that. That'd be awesome. That'd be so good. That'd be really cool. 
All right, then. Well, Darren, thank you so much, mate, for your time. I really um, appreciate it. It's been great talking to you about everything from Red Dragon to Harem Scarum to Kiss to... We've talked about a lot of stuff today. It's been great. Um, but, look, just take it easy, fella. Stay safe. Uh, st- stay cool. And I will and I will catch up with you very, very soon, all right? All right. If you can't be loved, be kind, brother. Absolutely. I couldn't agree with you more. Couldn't agree with you more. You take care. You too. Cheers. Cheers, man. Bye-bye.